Hi there, in this video we'll talk about the cost benefit analysis, what is the purpose of it and how we can use it, what are various types of it. So before we get started, let's just remind ourselves that if we have CBA, it means that we have cost benefit analysis and if we have BCA, it is also the same thing that is benefit cost analysis. So these two acronyms are not drastically different from each other, they mean the same thing. Now the purpose of doing CBA is there, once we have a project that we want to undertake or a policy intervention is there when we want to intervene and improve the current situation. The current situation can be in undesirable uh, plight and that can happen if the markets are failing. So market failure is basic reason for the rationale of going for an intervention. We know that market failure can be either due to public goods or externalities or asymmetric information or existence of the monopolies. So in order to provide a better uh, society and to make a better decision, we need to allocate the resources in an efficient manner and for that we have to intervene and the tool that we have that can guide us about the efficient allocation of the resources, the corrective measure, that science, that set of tools is collectively called as CBA. So when we undertake the CBA, we are trying to find out the most suitable intervention or any alternative program or policy or project. And we can have a, a number of projects out of which we can choose one or number of interventions out of which we can choose one. And within that set of possibilities, there can be status quo as well which is the existing state of affairs, that is if we do not do any intervention. So no intervention and all of the possible interventions, they can be listed and all of them should be subjected to cost benefit analysis. And then we are able to make a cost efficient allocation of the resources. So this is the purpose of doing cost benefit analysis and at state level it is uh, very much important and allows us to allocate the scarce resources of the nation in an efficient manner. Now there are uh, some types of CBA, there are four of them broadly speaking but um, in terms of their essence there are three of them. Out of these four, these two are the most important ones. The first one is the ex ante CBA, which means that it is before the event. As it is conducted prior to the intervention, uh, it is known as the ex ante CBA. And it is useful to show whether the resources should be used or not on that certain project. So it is an educated decision making that it will allow us to make. So ex ante CBA is done before the project. So it will involve some estimates. The estimates of the possible benefits and the possible costs. What it tries to do at the end, it tries to come up with the uh, with a certain value of the net social benefits, which is actually the difference of the social benefits and the social costs. And if the difference is positive, then it means that this intervention is advisable. Now the other possibility is that we undertake the CBA after the event, accordingly we can call it exposed CBA. And it is conducted at the end of the intervention. It can allow us to have information regarding a certain class of the interventions. For example, if a project is infra in infrastructure sector is completed or agriculture sector or industrial sector or services sector, if a project is undertaken and after that we conduct is exposed CBA, it will give us some uh, information, some experience and some learning about that certain category of project and in the future if it is an industrial nature of a project then we have some knowledge and experience that we can use in a way to mitigate the mistakes 
we can learn some lessons from that um, exposed CBA. And further CBAs that would be done in the future of exposed nature for other projects in the same dimension, they can also be made better in the light of this CBA. However, there is some uh, disadvantage of it and that is that we will be too late to reverse the resource allocation if it is found to be undesirable. Definitely the project is completed. If it is not desirable in terms of its benefits and costs, then definitely it is too late. However, it has its own utility of educating us and giving us lessons and experience and learning regarding a certain class of a project. So these are the two types that are opposite of each other. Then there is the third type which is in medias res CBA or post decision analysis. Now this is in the midst of the things as the title goes that it is dealing with the uh, project in the middle somewhere and it is conducted during the intervention. So as the name guides us it is during the intervention. It is neither ex ante nor exposed rather somewhere in the middle. It is useful when we are observing that the environmental costs are exceeding the environmental benefits because these are some vague costs and benefits and these cannot be precisely measured in the ex ante CBA. So in medias res type of CBA can allow us to do this analysis because when we are going through the project, when we are undertaking it, when it is in the implementation phase, then we are in a situation where we can more confidently uh, educate ourselves and take decisions, change the decisions because now we have the uh, values of environmental costs and benefits. And it is an aid to the ex ante analysis because we did the ex ante CBA in the beginning. Exposed analysis will be done in the future once the project is completed. But at this point in time, somewhere in the middle of the project, this in medias res analysis can help us to take the uh, to further refine our uh, understanding of the project and change various uh, steps if we find it undesirable. So it is further education after the ex ante analysis regarding the state of the project. It is basically avoided sometimes because uh, it can uh, have a stigma of uh, increasing or giving rise to retropism. Definitely because this will increase the requirements, the documentary evidence, the other official formalities, which is going to create uh, a kind of retropism in undertaking the project. And those sectors which are in need of that certain good or service from that sector uh, and that project, they will be considering it as retropism. So this is the in medias res uh, CBA which has its own benefits and disadvantages. Now the final is a comparative CBA which in itself is not a new type of CBA. Rather it's a comparison of the ex ante predictions with the exposed results. Because in ex ante CBA we make predictions about the benefits and the costs and in the exposed uh, CBA, we have the results that are there because of the completion of the project. So once we have this pre and post information of the same project, we can compare it and then see that how much precise our analysis was. And uh, these analyses are uh, a little limited to find because their clients are different. Because the ex ante predictions, they are usually required by the financing agencies because they are concerned about the allocation of the resources more than the uh, need of the sector in which the project is being undertaken. Whereas the exposed results are more uh, required by the 
sector in which the project is being undertaken they are the client of it because they are more concerned about the efficacy of the project that how much of the benefits are accrued due to this project since they are two different parties they are sitting in different agencies of the state therefore it is less likely that they will uh, do this type of comparison in cba so this is why their frequency of the uh, comparative cba it is low and you know the evidence is mixed sometimes they find that the cost of the large government infrastructure projects is often under uh, underestimated and it is quite expected because the infrastructure projects are quite large in terms of their magnitude and details so their cost can be underestimated and sometimes they have found that the costs they have been overestimated especially when it comes to the accuracy of U us regulatory cost estimates so the evidence is mixed both underestimation and overestimation has been found due to the comparative cba so it helps us in order to find out if there has been underestimation or overestimation this is where comparative cba is useful then we have the uh, identification of the past errors that we can uh, highlight by using the comparative cba and then we can understand the reasons and we can avoid them in the future so in this way the four types have been explained here we have a table that is made for convenience and in this first column we have the criteria for comparison among these four types of cba and these are the various criteria on the basis of which the comparison is made so the first criteria is about project specific decision making once we are trying to make a decision regarding a project if we should undertake it or not the ex ante analysis is most suitable because it enables us to decide before the project so the waste full expenditure is not done and if we talk about exposed analysis or exposed cba it will be too late because it will be after the project in mediastress yes it can be a little helpful because the cn might be reversed or it can be modified things can be revised a little bit so reversal might be a very rare case but revision is very much possible here the comparative cba is of no relevance because we are talking about during the project and a little bit during uh, before the project and little bit during the project but definitely comparative uh, analysis would be between the ex ante and the exposed analysis which will be irrelevant once the project is conducted so learning about the value of the specific project if we want to figure out that what is the worth of the project then the most useful is the exposed analysis because in this we have actual impacts here in ex ante analysis we have estimated impacts because before the project we can only estimate the impacts uh, may these be benefits or costs but once the project is completed actual impacts they are found so the exposed analysis in this case becomes the most useful in mediastress is uh, useful as well because it can uh, give us the values of the partially actual impacts whereas we have already understood that ex ante analysis is least useful and again comparative cba is not of much relevance in this case if we want to learn about the potential benefit of similar projects again the exposed analysis as we understood in its description is most suitable because it can help us to learn on the basis of actual impacts for the potential impacts that might be there in future similar projects so these actual impacts will be helpful in case of exposed analysis and partial learning can also be there in in mediastress but definitely this is the most suitable 
uh, type of CBA that one can undertake when it comes to understanding the potential benefits or of projects that are similar in nature. Finally, if you want to learn about the efficacy of CBA, then this is the most useful uh, type of CBA because efficacy is all about the real outcome of the CBA in this case. So the real outcome can be evaluated if we are able to compare ex ante and ex post analysis and comparative CBA does the same that is we compare the ex ante predictions with the ex post results and finally we can say that comparative CBA is the most suitable in order to judge the efficacy of the CBA. These studies basically tell us about the same thing that is the generalization. The degree of generalization matters. Sometimes the generalization cannot be done much. So the representative of the project is low. But if the project is quite a bit representative of the other similar projects, then it can be generalized to other or larger scale of the similar sort of projects. That is in similar sect same sector for example in agricultural sector or services sector or any other sub sector as well. Now finally we have the comparative uh, the uh, double asterisk in this case which is for comparative CBA and we know that comparison is done already between ex ante and ex post analysis but we can also do the comparison of ex ante and ex uh, in medias res analysis this might not be uh, as useful as there will be the comparison of ex ante and ex post analysis but still it can give us uh, a little bit of understanding to say the least about the efficacy of the project during its process. In this introduction of uh, CBA, we will also try to see that what kind of uh, costs are there in uh, doing the CBA. CBA requires quite a bit of resources and we can categorize them in some types. For example, we need time and it is not just a simple time, it is the analytical or analytic time which is required. So that time becomes the opportunity cost and definitely that can be quantified in terms of some monetary unit and it becomes the opportunity cost of that time that could have been invested in some other analytical activity. When it comes to uh, the human side of the things, yes, the skilled human capital will be employed in this process of doing CBA. So the opportunity cost will be there in this regard as well. The skilled human capital, its time and its energy, it will be invested and definitely we can say that it becomes another opportunity cost. Finally, the undeniable component of the cost, that is the monetary part, it is also there. And if it is there, it means that it could have been spent somewhere else, but we are spending it in this process of undertaking CBA. So we can decompose the cost of doing CBA into these three parts. In this way, we have tried to understand the cost of CBA, the types of CBA, and their details, their comparison, and the rationale of doing CBA. Thank you.